Hello and welcome to another episode of my Facts and Glitches series, where I showcase some more of what I have learned about GTA 5 in the over 6,500 hours that I have been speedrunning the game. I'm sure most of you know this room, but for those who do not, this is a part of some cut content from Prologue. It's only accessible by clipping through a wall using mods. I believe originally the play was meant to go in this room and deal with the surveillance footage by some means. Speaking of prologue, if you ragdoll and then quickly switch characters, your original character will have an invisible weapon. Share, it's still wide open. Drop it, prick. You can even switch back and fire the invisible weapon, although it does reappear when you run out of ammo. While much harder to do, another oddity occurs when you ragdoll as Trevor is taking off his mask. Let's get out of here. Can't be many more cops in this town. Bring him. This is fucked, man. The thing is blown. Trevor will have less hair than normal and his mask will levitate on the ground. You'll further be locked out of your character, meaning you can't do much else except move and melee. Whenever you enter a character's garage, your character is given an attribute so that the next time you drive a car, you will appear at the garage exit. Normally, you are locked into the garage, so your choice of car is limited, but there are a few ways to gain this attribute without being locked in. The first way is getting on a bike, lighting a fire, and then entering the garage. The result is that the next time you drive a vehicle, whatever vehicle that is, you'll be teleported to the garage exit. Ah! The other way to achieve this effect is more useful but a tad more complex. First, activate a taxi mission and get out of the vehicle. I'm open for a pickup. Guessing out of the taxi is meant to stop the taxi mission from starting, but the game cannot stop it while the person over the radio is speaking. This means there is a small window where you can get into a car and enter a garage before the mission officially cancels. I got a pickup not too far from you. Sending you the address now. Normally this animation prevents control of your character, but the ending of the taxi mission gives you control back, allowing you to get out of your vehicle. Depending upon your timing, you'll either end up getting out of the vehicle before your car goes into the garage at all, or you'll go in slightly and end up falling through the floor. Either case will result in you being on the outside of the garage while you have the attribute we discussed earlier. The reason why this method is more useful than the other is that you're able to prevent yourself from being warped back by holding up the interaction menu. So you can drive any car as much as you like, it'll only warp you back when you put down the menu. You can ultimately taxi and or drive anywhere in the game and get any vehicle to come out of your garage, regardless of its size. I do mean any vehicle, from boats to submarines to blimps. Shit. With this garage warping glitch, it is possible to explore the entirety of North Yankton outside of missions, by first entering the mission Bury the Hatchet while the glitch is active. Hey man. If you started the mission with Trevor, you are prompted to drive to your airfield and then fly your plane. When you reach the part of the mission where Trevor is about to reach North Yankton, the game forces down the interaction menu and warps Trevor to the garage, killing him, allowing you to leave the mission.
all the assets necessary for you to go to North Yankton in the mission Bury the Hatchet are still loaded on the map, and you can reach them using a helicopter. The land is so massive that if you try to get to the edge of it, your vehicle will begin to malfunction, as do all vehicles that go too far out in the ocean. Another interesting thing about these garage warp glitches is that if you use the same vehicle again, the vehicle that you used to perform the glitch, that vehicle will become invulnerable. The same effect of course happens with the other method as well. Technically, the vehicles aren't actually invulnerable, as they can get damage from other sources. <laughs> Molotovs, which can be found on the map from the very start of the game, can be used to show some weird things in effectively every mission. I'm going to show you some of these oddities each episode. I will start from the beginning of the game and go in chronological order. Here on Prologue, while it is not normally possible to get Molotovs, if you mod them in, you'll quickly notice that everyone is immune to fire. While you can't normally use weapons in your safe house, if you get the cops on you, you can throw Molotovs at Auntie Denise and she doesn't seem to really care. In the first scene of the mission repossession, Lamar is completely immune to fire for some reason. This next one's a bit long, but it's worth it. The mission with the most oddities, unsurprisingly, is Father Son. We will pick up with more Molotov Odysseys next time. This fence that features on the mission Mr. Richards is always indestructible, but at least it opens. Or I should say, it opens before the mission Mr. Richards, afterwards, regardless of what you do, it will not open.
Before you all click away, I would like to give a big thanks to Amaya, MMKJ, Chrome Exhaust, and Justice, who either gave me or inspired all the glitches involved with the garage warps. And so that ends this episode, thanks for watching. I should have another one out fairly soon, because I do have a lot more things to show. I hope you're all doing well.